Okay. I hope everyone's able to see the screen. Okay. So I'll just give you a quick introduction on who I am. Okay. I'm actually a DevOps trainer who's working with uh, IT Talent Hub, which is a uh, uh, one of the institutions which is based out of UK. Okay, for training services, basically for the last 10 to 12 years, they are working there. And uh, so I have been started off as a software developer initially and more of a full stack developer. And then later on, I was working as a faculty uh, in an engineering college. And now I'm into full time training um, for focus basically on cloud computing and DevOps. Okay, so close to more than 12 plus years of experience. Um, overall, and um, so I'm looking forward to you know um, introducing you to the IT Talent Hub. Okay, so this is a, a dedicated team uh, of uh, trainers who is uh, who believes in you know upskilling the uh, people who want to say change their domain from particular who are from the IT background or who are from non IT background, and we can adapt you to upskill yourself and be more. Uh, well equipped for the uh, job market which is there in the UK environment. Okay, so uh, I wanted to just tell you about IT Talent Hub, and um, I'll also give you today a quick demo class on DevOps and cloud computing. Okay, so before that, I'll just talk about all the clients which are uh, there with IT Talent Hub. These are some of the clients, and um, and most of the students. Uh, uh, people who have taken training under ITH uh, do get certification from us and eventually they have also been uh, recruited into multiple companies, reputed companies. So these are some of the uh, students who have been under training here. OK, and uh, if you see here, the curriculum is designed to cater to the UK job market. OK, and um, there's a job support program also after the training, which is going to help you in the CV creation, uh, your curriculum vitae, your resume, what you say, and also helps you to get in connection with the top consultancies and recruitment team is available. And also along with your coursework, you'll also be working on some live project, which will help you and in understanding all what you have learned in your coursework, as well as help you to add that to your resume as your own. Okay. So it's a certification based training. After the training, you will be provided with a certification uh, which you can add into your resume. OK, so CV support, like I said, a real time project which you will be working on. Uh, all interviews uh, support will be provided. OK, all technical concepts, um, technologies which are latest to the UK job market will be trained, uh, will be giving training on that and all placement support will be given. OK, so what? Our approach is generally training of two months, then a live project, then an assessment will be done, and then finally job support service and interview support. All that will be there in the job support service. Okay, so uh, the coursework which we're looking at is related with what we call as DevOps and cloud computing. Okay, so the certifications will be provided based on this course name. OK, so my name is Indu Anup and I'll just give you a little bit brief idea on what is actually DevOps. OK, so generally whenever I take any sessions uh, as a trainer, most of the things that I do, I'll just take a worksheet one second. OK. Is first of all, I will be providing you all. Uh, what do you say support in terms of? Uh, lab worksheets okay with whatever we do anything related to the labs that means say screenshots of what I'm executing all the commands that means any code commands or anything that I'm executing what are they all that will be provided in a lab worksheet for every single session okay every session is recorded so you can get all the recorded sessions OK, in a drive. All the PPTs which I would be taking will be there and most of the concepts would be thought in a whiteboard concept just like this. I will be teaching in whiteboard. OK, and once all the lab worksheets and everything is done, we will also be focusing on the project. OK, on how the execution is done. Everything will be focused 
and um, in terms of how installations are done, the working, everything, details will be provided to you. Okay. So if you look at the DevOps, okay, let's take for an example what actually DevOps is. Okay. Now, most of you told me that you are from non IT background. Okay. Now, the best part compared to being a programmer or a software developer, you could say, and programmers or software developers are need to know extensive coding, okay, uh, which is not there in DevOps, okay. You don't need to learn extensive coding or a programming language, like you need to know extensive uh, Java or anything like that. That's not required when you're doing DevOps, okay. Here it's more of commands that we're going to learn. And uh, most of them are like certain tools that you're going to learn automation tools like instance. Say I am taking this PPT. OK, how much time do will it take for you to learn how to use a PowerPoint? OK, click this, do this, this section. That's how you create same thing. So most of them are tool based. OK, you have a bunch of tools that you need to learn. OK, and some of those tools are not commanded, are not through click based. Like I'm making changes to this through click based. Through the user interface, OK? Sometimes you need to have certain commands. Commands can be like start, stop, shut down. OK, these kind of things. Kind of like English like commands, which you will understand in the context how it is used. Using these commands, you can also control those tools and make it do certain executions. OK, so if I say dev ops, it ideally means two sections. The dev part stands for development team. And the ops part stands for operations. Team. OK, so you as a DevOps person who is upskilled will be called as a you can hire yourself as a DevOps engineer as what you call as an SRE or a site reliability engineer, site reliability engineer. Maybe you can also, uh, you know, apply for yourself as a platform engineer, okay? So these are the job roles which you will be able to apply for once you are skilled in DevOps, okay? And of course, DevOps is a kind of high paying job, okay? So um, that is another advantage of being a DevOps uh, skilled person, okay? So when I say development, generally development is writing code. OK, now who writes code? The software developers, the programmers. OK, and who is the operations team? They are the ones who manage. The production environment. Production environment is nothing but like a machine. Okay, this is a machine. OK, if in a machine you have a web server installed on it, it becomes what we call as a production environment. Basically, you take the code and put it on this machine or install it on that machine. What you call as deployment. OK, when you take the code that the software developers have written and put it into this machine. Machine. Then that is done using the operation team. They are the ones who deal with it. Now, operations team mainly are two different ones like system admins and administrator. OK, now before we take the code and put it into this machine, we always make sure like if I'm doing something new on my laptop, what do I do? I make sure my laptop is up to date, right? Whenever we shut down the PC, we see an update and shut down. We ensure that everything is up to date. OK, so system admins make sure everything is up to date. Any software dependency that the code was requiring any system environment because everything is up to date. The system admin ensures and also there's one more team in this which is called as network engineers. OK, making sure the network connectivity to this machine is correct. OK, because not only are you going to learn a bunch of DevOps tools. OK, to help whom the development team and the operations team. OK, now if development team knows how to do their job, operations team knows how to do their job, then why do we need a DevOps engineer? Why we need them? Because imagine this code that is there. This is a software developer center. He, I have two versions of it, version one and version two. OK, where I have added some extra feature. 
operations team may assume that the latest version of the code is version 2 and there was a miscommunication okay and the version 2 was put onto the web server of the code but the development team had sent an email stating that the version 2 there is a slight integration issue and let's go with version 1 deployment and deploy this a few hours later after that issue is resolved but that communication did not go through and the operation team with the errors code has gone and put it on the production server that means your website is not visible now to the end user due to some problem okay so then they start fighting with each other who the development team and the operations why do they fight with each other because the wrong version of the code has gone into the production environment onto the machine okay if the wrong version has gone the end users who are the users from the internet would be seeing some other version than what was supposed to be seen by them okay so to ensure that there is a better workflow with them we try to streamline the process by using automated tools why do we use this automated tools to remove the manual intervention and make it a more streamlined process workflow you could say of taking the correct version of the code and putting the correct version onto the website input correct version get the output the correct version so that streamlined workflow is set up using these automated tools is it clear everyone did you understand what a devops engineer's role is any doubt till here yeah yeah it, it's clear okay okay so let me just open a small ppt which i have okay which nothing but talks about what this devops is okay now the thing is you know if we have something which is automated and removing manual interventions then what happens things become much more faster right instead of me sitting and fighting as a development team uh, the coders they won't be sitting and fighting the operations team uh, on to to get the correct one they can focus on making newer version of code correct the focus is now they are focused on what their job is to write new code they are not sitting and fighting on the old code that has had an error on it okay so like that so that's why we call as devops okay so if i say what is devops okay what is devops devops is a combination of certain cultural philosophies practices and tools now the thing is learning a bunch of tools is not enough okay you need to have a different cultural philosophy and practice as well means what do you what could be that mean that means someone who is ready to will to change okay the fact that you all came in you're not even from an it background you all came from non-it background and you are ready for change that is why you have come for the session right so tools will exist but you need to have the right approach to learn something new and also not learn not even learn willing to make errors you're not afraid of change and you're not afraid of finding errors okay if there is an error it is better to find it now than to get it later correct so always it is important to have the correct mindset a philosophical and it's a cultural change you could say almost okay where you, nobody's fighting with each other it's all about teamwork teamwork makes the dream work so devops is not just a bunch of tools it's a lot of philosophical practices that are involved in it okay so what does this enable applications to be delivered faster to the end user okay and if you deliver applications and more features faster your customer is going to be happy and you can also be more effective than other people who are in the same sector okay so as a devops engineer you are work, working for a particular bank okay you can, you will be automating their workflows and then your bank your company that you work for is going to have one is going to be more well equipped to manage change compared to another banking bank in the same sector right so devops is all about having creating the streamlined process the streamlined process is created like a pipeline okay with multiple stages in it so we are going to create this pipeline using a bunch of tools okay and where 
the company that you work for, you will build the software product, build it, you will test whether everything is working and release it to your end customers. But you know, when you make some product, you just give it to give it to that person. That's not enough. You have to get feedback. Is it working fine? Is it as per your expectations? OK, do you suggest any change? OK, so just by releasing it to the end user is not enough. You need to get a feedback loop. Right Right now I asked you guys, right? did you understand? Right. I'm not waiting for the very end to ask you. Did you understand? In between, I will be keeping on asking. So if there is something that you want to tell me, you can tell me now. And I'll take corrective measure and replan. And again, re-release. But I'll take corrective measure right now. And then the next slide, I'll tell, OK, let me implement what you have just given me a feedback. I'll try to implement. OK, so DevOps is all about everything is customer centric. You have to focus on what the customer wants, not what you want. Focus should be always on the customer. But yes, streamlining the process with the help of certain automation tools. OK. What those tools are, we will learn. Don't worry. OK, so as a developer, previously lots of challenges software developers used to face. There's a lot of time for the code to get deployed. So that means put it to the uh, uh, production server, to the operations team. They are fighting with each other, all this thing. Now everything is continuous. Quick deployment happens with the adopting DevOps. OK, developer or the software developer need not work on old code. Because old codes error suddenly pops up from nowhere. Because testing was not done properly, maybe automation testing was not done and everything. Uh, there was some integration issue at the time when it was given to somebody else. OK, to the operations team, there were problems, so they are not able to focus on writing new code. They're stuck with the old code. OK, errors. So now the focus is more on current code. Because the old code is 100%. The correct version of the code is going to go to the operations team. There is no doubt about it because the manual interventions are all removed. OK, so now the developer can focus on writing new code. OK, so energy is very much retained. Same way operations team. Who is the operations team? The system admins. And the network engineers. How can we help them? OK, as DevOps, once we learn DevOps, what kind of solutions can we provide to them? OK, first of all, the production environment. It is very difficult to keep it up 24 bar 7. Now it is not like that because of certain DevOps rules. There's a great reliability and the server is always up. That means there is no downtime. OK, and all the infrastructure which is there, all the infrastructures are you can uh, proactively manage those infrastructure using certain automation tools. OK, suppose for instance, I want. There was one server. One server, OK, and suddenly there was a, the number of users who are accessing your website. You can generally websites are hosted on a server. OK, website, the number of users accessing the website suddenly increase. Suppose you're having a match, OK? Football World Cup final. OK, that is a website. It's a streaming platform for a sports uh, channel. OK, and suddenly your, the website suddenly has more number of users for the final match. So one server cannot handle that much user search. So you need to scale up and increase the number of servers. Say maybe you want 10,000 servers. OK, how to do it fast using certain automation tools. You can do some tool called as Terraform. Using Terraform, you write a particular script. OK, and execute that script whenever you want and 10,000 servers would be spun up in a fraction of some time. OK, so that kind of power in terms of learning these kind of automation tools at the right time really helps the companies to scale up. Netflix classic example where DevOps is adopted. OK, now they're the market lead when it comes to streaming platforms for movies, right? They, they were one of the first companies that adopted the DevOps culture and they came it came across it actually by mistake when they were migrating to the cloud and we'll talk about that. We learn few case studies on that when we learn the course. Okay. Yeah. 
And not just that, you have to monitor those servers. This 10,000 servers which we scale up to, you need to monitor all of them. Imagine having a dashboard, okay? A dashboard which the first part talking about how much is the CPU percentage is utilized already. How much memory is utilized already? How much compute capacity? Everything. You're able to see it in a dashboard like that, just like a scoreboard of a football match. Okay, you will know what are the statistics. And if anything is going wrong, you, you can sense. Like by halftime, you're not scored. That means something is going to go wrong. Okay, something like that. You are able to see from the monitoring dashboard. Those kind of monitoring dashboards we're going to learn. We're going to learn something called as NADGEUS. We will learn something which is called as Prometheus and Grafana. These are all monitoring tools, okay, which the network engineers use to monitor the network, how fast it is, everything, and also to monitor the system, okay, if everything is working fine, okay. These ways you can help the operations team. So at learning these DevOps solutions helps you to, to finally adopt uh, the DevOps culture into your company, which you work for. Okay. Yeah. So finally, what happens? You are able to get all these things. Faster solution, performance is improved, efficiency is improved, everything. Everything is continuous. Okay. You don't stop at something. You replan and re-implement again and again. Okay, improved customer experience, they're also happy. And in case anything happens, you can go back to a previous version. Rollback also happens fast. Okay, if there's something goes wrong, remove it, go back to the previous version of code. That also happens faster. Okay, so return on investment for your product is much more fast. Okay, these are what you call as the business benefits of DevOps. Okay. And how do you adopt this DevOps? Nothing but initially you need to have a cultural transfer mindset to adopt. Then you need to change the process involved in your company. Then using the basically the workflow, okay? And technology adopt, try to learn all the technologies, everything automate. And it should be available 24 bar seven, okay? What is the point? If I have a tool, okay, I learned any DevOps tool. Suppose I learned a DevOps tool. If I installed it on my laptop, do you think you can use that tool? If I install a DevOps tool on my laptop, can you access the laptop, my laptop 24 by 7? Suppose you remotely log into my laptop, okay, using any... Um, service team weaver or something you use and you access my laptop. You can use it for some time so as my laptop is on. If I've kept my laptop on, then you can use my DevOps tool, which I have installed on my laptop. But otherwise, can you do it if I shut down my PC? Can you access my system remotely? Is it possible? No. No. That is why we are learning DevOps in a combination with cloud computing. All the DevOps tools that we are learning are going to be installed not on my laptop, but on a machine which is provided from a cloud computing platform like AWS. Okay, AWS is the has a largest market share when it comes to cloud computing resources. So all the DevOps tools is going to be there on a cloud environment. And the advantage of being in the cloud environment is that it is available 24 bar 7. If it is available 24 bar 7, only can I say that it is continuous. Correct? When I say something is available 24 7, it means it is continuous. Always does process. If I say monitoring, only monitoring is like me going into a classroom and checking if everything is right for five minutes and coming out of the class. Continuous monitoring is when I have a CCTV camera on to check forever recording on to whether the class is working fine or everything is happening smooth okay that's called continuous monitoring so you need to have all the tools on cloud computing platforms which is what we will be doing okay yeah this is called as the devops life cycle okay devops life cycle it's like a feedback loop an infinity infinity symbol right an infinity symbol is all looks like a feedback loop something which is continuous happening always 
Okay. Imagine you plan something. Now in planning phase, like you are me and you, we are on this session right now. We are, what are we using? We're using Teams to communicate with each other. I'm using PowerPoint to display my design or whatever I have. Okay. I'm using what else? Um, say, suppose I'm sharing some files with you. I'm using Google Drive. Okay. Maybe I have a project management tool like Jira. Okay. That could be project management planning phase tool. A, what do you call as a sprint tool? Okay. Maybe I have that or what do you call as scrum based tool. We will come to that. Whatever. So some tools I'm using that comes under the planning phase. I'm planning what to do, what to create, what to code. How does it design? All that comes in the planning phase. Okay. The code part is when the code is written. Who writes the code? Developer. But we are not developers. Who are we? We are the DevOps engineers. So then why should we write the code? Why is there a code phase? Because we are not going to drive the code. We are going to version the code. We are going to help the developer to version the code using certain version control tools like Git and GitHub. Imagine the developer is not able to focus. He's like telling, oh no, today whatever code I wrote is all it's not working. Something is wrong with it. I want to revert back to the code which I wrote day before yesterday. Now I have no idea what is the code that I wrote in. So we need kind of some sort of tracking tool, okay? Which tells the dev, which will help the developer to tell as to when the code was changed at what time, okay? Uh, who made the code change? Maybe I want to revert to something which some my colleague has written. That was the correct one. I want to go to his. So I need to know who his he scored where it is, right? And where, which line of code? There may be 10,000 lines of code. Maybe I want a section of that code only. Okay, full tracking of the code is done using these tools, Git and GitHub combination. That's what a DevOps is. We don't write the code. We help the developer to version the code that is available. Okay, using those kind of things. And in build tool, these are all different phases. Okay, it comes like this, like this, and then repeats, replan again, and then repeat. Okay, now these other sections which are there, okay, every section or phase of the DevOps lifecycle has multiple tools. Okay, this is just a gist of the number of tools that we're going to learn. We're going to learn more than this. Okay. From the coursework you would see in the which would be shared with you. Uh, I think Mamta will get in touch with you regarding that. Okay, so we are going to learn a lot more. Okay, uh, not just this. Okay, Jira, you are seeing it in the code phase. Actually, it is part of the planning phase, but it can be integrated with the code phase. That's why it's shown in the diagram. Okay, not that it is completely part of this. So here, main we are going to focus on Git and GitHub combination. There's a build phase where we focus on Maven. Test part where we focus on automation testing. Okay. Uh, once the code is tested, it is released. Okay. Remember, where is it released to? Deployed on which server? Not on my laptop. Code is not put on my laptop. Where is it deployed, released, and deployed to whom? AWS Cloud. Okay. We're going to focus on putting everything on AWS Cloud, including the deployment server. The production server is going to be on AWS Cloud. So operations team will be managing this. OK, so the operations team comes later on and they told right the servers which are there. Maybe I don't want only one server. I want to scale up to say 10,000 10, servers. Then I'll use in the operations part, we'll use something called as Terraform. There's one more tool called Terraform. OK, suppose the 10,000 servers that are there suddenly I want to do a software upgrade on 10,000 servers. OK, is there any DevOps tool that will help me to do a software upgrade or, or, or I want to install something? Now I'm not going to remotely log into one server and install and the second server and then install third server and install. How can I do it for all 10,000 system through one config file? OK, that we're going to use Chef and Ansible. There's one more which is called as Puppet. We will learn that also. They all come together in one uh, phase. Okay. Monitoring purpose. We're going to learn NatJS. We'll also be learning, like I said, from this graph. 
Okay, these are all different tools which we will be learning. Okay, if you see the coursework, it ends um, here. Now, training second. Okay, this is the brochure which will be shared with you, those who have not got it. Okay, we'll be learning all these things. Okay, there's something called Ansible, Terraform. Uh, monitoring, we'll be learning, we'll be learning Docker, Kubernetes, okay. Uh, DevOps is not possible without Docker and Kubernetes. We'll be learning what it is. We'll be learning what is called as uh, uh, microservice applications. We'll be learning what is that, okay, full thing. So, uh, see, don't get scared that you're from a non-IT background, okay. Everybody has to start somewhere. OK, so it's not a uh, this thing that, you know, you have to know everything. Then only you can start something new. It's not like that. OK, just have an open mind. You can learn everything. OK, that's what I would suggest. OK, so module wise, what we're going to learn, we can always go through this. There are lots of other extra tools which are going to learn, which are these ones. Grand Culver. So I said some of them are not visible here. OK, but we will be learning a lot more than what is shown. This is just a gist of the diagram. OK, not the whole thing. OK, so as a uh, uh, DevOps engineer, you need to be sort of like a system admin. Uh, know a bit of cloud computing. So this virtualization is part of cloud computing. You can see the cloud over here. OK, cloud computing. A little bit about that. Um, network storage and security of the cloud environment. OK, we're going to learn that. A uh, bit knowledge of testing. That means how to integrate certain testing tools. See, testing is done by the testers. We don't need to focus on that, but we will be helping them to integrate some of their tools with some of the DevOps tools. Okay, that way. Okay, understanding some of the automation tools and little bit coding knowledge. Okay, why do you say little bit coding knowledge? I mean, sometimes you need to recognize, like if the code is written using Java, then the build tool that we are going to use to process the code or compile the code. Okay, I'll tell what is compilation or not. Then we learn the course. Okay, then for that we use Maven. Okay, now if the code is written in uh, .NET, which is Microsoft's language, okay, .NET on Microsoft platform, then what happens? The build tool that you'll use is MS Build. Okay, so what happens? We need to know what language is written choose which build tool to use. Correct. Based on what you want. What language are you speaking based on that? Like, right? So first I'll ask you, uh, what is your, uh, what do you say? What what language do you all speak in? So if you say you speak in English, then I will then I will choose all my resources would be in English. Correct. If it's some other language that you're speaking, probably I'll have to translate and choose the correct build tool accordingly for the session. Right, something like that. So, little bit recognition and understanding of what kind of coding language is used. Not that we have to write the code. That's not what we focus on. Okay, so a bit of soft skills. Okay, why do you need soft skills? When you go to any company, when you go to any company, the first thing that they're going to ask is say, suppose today I tell them, you know, don't use NAT juice. If I tell them, don't use NAT juice, instead use Prometheus and Grafana. First of all, I need to have the technical sales knowledge. Okay, a little bit knowledge as to what, why should I should convince them, have the soft skills power. Just See, sometimes it's not enough to just know coding or just to know some tools. Technically, you may be great, but if you don't know how to convey that in the correct manner, you may not be convincing enough. Okay, that's why we say a little bit of soft skill knowledge does help. Okay, whenever you are as a DevOps engineer. Okay, because in the end, what are we doing? We are trying to reduce the miscommunication between the developer and the operations team. If we are trying to reduce the miscommunication between them, we have to communicate. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So first, that is also a requirement. Okay. But you know, when you know, when you're technically good, you know everything. You you get more. Uh, you know, uh, you become more uh, confident in talking and convincing others. If you're technically good, so definitely technical part is eighty percent, twenty 
person only is the talking part. Okay, so don't worry about that. Yes. After that, the global market. Okay. So market, everybody understood till here. Any doubt in terms of what is DevOps? Uh, what kind of tools we're going to be learning? Just a gist about it. Any 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 confusion? Anything about anything that you would like to know? No. All okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you look at the job market, the expected one, DevOps, is projected to grow by thirty billion dollars by twenty twenty eight. Okay. Lots of career opportunities coming in the sector, and uh, lucky for you all, the maximum job market share is in Europe, and it comes to DevOps. Okay. DevOps job market is maximum in Europe. Okay. Second being USA. And the third being Asia Pacific. Okay. And there's another advantage of being a DevOps engineer is the chances of you getting a work from home job or a remote opportunity is going to be more. That means I can be sitting in Asia Pacific and earning in dollars. Okay. Because of the fact that all the DevOps tools are installed on the cloud environment. And the cloud environment, like AWS Cloud, is accessible anywhere 24 bar 7. You can configure it anywhere, sitting anywhere in the world. Okay, it's not something which is only restricted to a bunch of servers which are there on location, on site. No, everything is on cloud environment. So you can definitely get a remote opportunity if you are a DevOps engineer. Okay, so it's not only restricted that a job market here is less, it does not mean that you can't apply for jobs here in the US. Okay, definitely. Okay, you guys can, in fact, 32% is in Europe. So, uh, maximum on site also you can go. Okay, when it comes to Europe. Okay. Any confusion, anything, any doubt you have any further? Okay, I'll just give you some details about. Uh, this one job support service. This is what we are doing after the coursework is over. Uh, you'll get some jobs from compute, uh, companies for the, with help re, uh, regarding recruitment. Uh, we'll help you with the CV, how to write it. There will be a marketing agent that is involved where you can apply for the roles. Okay, and the interview full support will be provided. A mentor will be assigned to you for your batch. Okay, month for batch.